a Wikivide Documentaries production. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Enjoy. Joan Rivers Joan Alexandra Merlinsky, professional name Joan Rivers, was an American stand-up comedian, actress, writer, producer, and television host. She was noted for her often controversial comedic persona, heavily self-deprecating or sharply acerbic, especially towards celebrities and politicians. Rivers gained prominence in 1965 as a guest on The Tonight Show, hosted by her mentor, Johnny Carson. The show established Rivers' comedic style. In 1986, with her own rival program, The Late Show with Joan Rivers, Rivers became the first woman to host a late-night network television talk show. She subsequently hosted The Joan Rivers Show, winning a Daytime Emmy for Outstanding Talk Show Host. Having become widely known for her comedic red carpet awards show celebrity interviews, she was the 2009 Celebrity Apprentice winner. Rivers co-hosted the E! Celebrity fashion show Fashion Police from 2010 to 2014, and starred in reality series Joan and Melissa, Joan Knows Best. With daughter Melissa Rivers, she was the subject of the documentary Joan Rivers, a piece of work. In addition to marketing a line of jewelry, and apparel on the QVC shopping channel, Rivers authored 12 best-selling books, and three LP comedy albums under her own name, Mr. Phyllis and Other Funny Stories, the next to last Joan Rivers album, and the Grammy-nominated What Becomes a Semi-Legend Most. She was nominated in 1984 for a Grammy Award for her album What Becomes a Semi-Legend Most, and was nominated in 1994 for the Tony Award for Best Actress in a Play for her performance of the title role in Sally Mardot and her escorts. In 2015, Rivers posthumously received a Grammy Award for Best Spoken Word Album for her book, Diary of a Mad Diva. In 1968, the New York Times television critic Jack Gould called Rivers, quite possibly the most intuitively funny woman alive. In 2017, Rolling Stone magazine ranked her sixth on its list of the 50 best stand-up comics of all time. She was inducted into the Television Academy Hall of Fame in October 2017. Early Life Rivers was born Joan Alexandra Malinsky on June 8, 1933, in Brooklyn, New York, the daughter of Russian Jewish immigrants Beatrice and Dr. Marcy Malinsky, who graduated from Long Island College of Medicine. Her elder sister, Barbara Waxler, died on June 3, 2013 at the age of 82. Rivers spent her early life in Prospect Heights and Crown Heights in Brooklyn, where she attended the Progressive and now defunct Brooklyn Ethical Culture School and Adelphi Academy of Brooklyn, a college preparatory day school, where she was co-chairman of her school due to her past experiences in theatrical activities. Within two years, she performed in the school cavalcades, and in 1949, aged 16, she was vice president of the Dramatic Club. She graduated from the Adelphi Academy of Brooklyn in 1950, at almost 17. In her adolescence, Rivers relocated with her family to Larchmont, north of New York City. Rivers stated in interviews that she was overweight throughout her childhood and adolescence, and that it had a profound impact on her body image which she would struggle with throughout her life. She attended Connecticut College between 1950 and 1952, and graduated from Barnard College in 1954 with a B.A. summer cum laude in English Literature and Anthropology. She was a member of Phi Beta Kappa. Before entering show business, Rivers worked at various jobs such as a tour guide at Rockefeller Center, a writer-slash-proofreader at an advertising agency and a fashion consultant at Bond Clothing Stores. During this period, agent Tony Rivers advised her to change her name, so she chose Joan Rivers as her stage name. 1950s-1960s During the late 1950s, Rivers appeared in a short-run play, Driftwood, playing a lesbian with a crush on a character played by a then-unknown Barbara Streisand. The play ran for six weeks. Rivers performed in numerous comedy clubs in the Greenwich Village area of New York City in the early 1960s, including The Bitter End and The Gaslight Cafe, before making her first appearances as a guest on the TV program The Tonight Show originating from New York, hosted at the time by Jack Parr. By 1965, Rivers had a stint on Candid Camera as a gag writer and participant. She was the bait 
to lure people into ridiculous situations for the show. She also made her first appearance on The Tonight Show with new host Johnny Carson. On February 17, 1965, during the same decade, Rivers made other appearances on The Tonight Show as well as The Ed Sullivan Show, while hosting the first of several talk shows. She wrote material for the puppet Top Hojijo. She had a brief role in The Swimmer, starring Burt Lancaster. A year later, she had a short-lived syndicated daytime talk show, that show with Joan Rivers. Johnny Carson was her first guest. In the middle of the 1960s, she released at least two comedy albums, the next to last Joan Rivers album, and Rivers presents Mr. Phyllis and other funny stories. 1970s by the 1970s, Rivers was appearing on various television comedy and variety shows, including The Carol Burnett Show, and a semi-regular stint on Hollywood Squares. From 1972 to 1976, she narrated The Adventures of Letterman, an animated segment, for The Electric Company. In 1973, Rivers wrote the TV movie The Girl Most Likely To, a black comedy starring Stockard Channing. In 1978, Rivers wrote and directed the film Rabbit Test, starring her friend Billy Crystal. During the same decade, she was the opening act for singers Helen Reddy, Robert Goulet, Mac Davis and Sergio Franchi on The Las Vegas Strip. 1980s 1990s Rivers spoke of her primary Tonight Show life as having been Johnny Carson's daughter, a reference to his longtime mentoring of her and during the 1980s, establishing her as his regular guest host by August 1983, she also hosted an episode of Saturday Night Live, on April 9, 1983. In the same period, she released a best-selling comedy album on Geffen Records, what becomes a semi-legend most. The album reached number 22 on the US Billboard 200 and was nominated for a Grammy Award for Best Comedy Album. During the 1980s, she continued doing stand-up shows along with appearing on various television shows. In February 1983, she performed at Carnegie Hall and the following year, she did stand up on the United Kingdom's TV show An Audience with Joan Rivers. During the 1980s and 1990s Rivers served on the advisory board of the National Student Film Institute. A friend of Nancy and President Ronald Reagan, Rivers attended a state dinner in 1983, and later, at the invitation of Nancy, spoke at luncheon at the 1984 Republican National Convention. In 1984, Rivers published a best-selling humor book, The Life and Hard Times of Heidi Abramowitz, a mock memoir of her brassy, loose comedy character. A television special based on the character, a mock tribute called Joan Rivers and Friends Salute Heidi Abramowitz, was not successful with the public. The decade was controversial for Rivers. She sued female impersonator Frank Marino for $5 million in 1986, after discovering he was using her real stand-up material in the impersonation of her that he included in his popular Las Vegas act. The two comics reconciled and even appeared together on television in later years. In 1986 came the move that ended River's longtime friendship with Johnny Carson, who had first hired her as a Tonight Show writer. The soon-to-launch Fox Television Network announced that it was giving her a late-night talk show, The Late Show starring Joan Rivers, making Rivers the first woman to have her own late-night talk show on a major network. The new network planned to broadcast the show 11 p.m. to 12 a.m. Eastern Time, making her a Carson competitor. Carson learned of the show from Fox and not from Rivers. In the documentary, Johnny Carson, King of Late Night, Rivers said she only called Carson to discuss the matter after learning he may have already heard about it, and that he immediately hung up on her. In the same interview, she said that she later came to believe that maybe she should have asked for his blessing before taking the job. Rivers was banned from appearing on The Tonight Show, a decision respected by Carson's first two successors Jay Leno and Conan O'Brien. After the release of his 2013 biography on Johnny Carson, Carson's attorney Henry Bushkin revealed that he never received a call from Rivers' husband Edgar concerning the move to Fox, contrary to what Edgar had told Rivers. Rivers did not appear on The Tonight Show again until February 17, 2014, when she made a brief appearance on new host Jimmy Fallon's first episode. On March 27, 2014, Rivers returned for an interview. Shortly after Carson's death in 2005, Rivers said that he had never spoken to her again. 
In 2008, during an interview with Dr. Pamela Connolly on television's Shrink Rap, Rivers claimed she did call Carson, but he hung up on her at once and repeated the gesture when she called again. The late show starring Joan Rivers turned out to be flecked by tragedy. When Rivers challenged Fox executives, who wanted to fire her husband Edgar Rosenberg as the show's producer, the network fired them both on May 15, 1987. Three months later, on August 14, 1987, Rosenberg committed suicide in Philadelphia. Rivers blamed the tragedy on his humiliation by Fox. Rivers credited Nancy Reagan with helping her after her husband's suicide. Fox attempted to continue the show with a new name and rotating guest hosts. Rivers subsequently appeared on various TV shows, including Late Night with David Letterman and Pee Wee's Playhouse Christmas Special. By 1989, she tried another daytime TV talk show, The Joan Rivers Show, which ran for five years and won her a daytime Emmy in 1990 for Outstanding Talk Show Host. In 1994, Rivers and daughter Melissa first hosted the E! Entertainment Television Pre-Awards show for the Golden Globe Awards, and beginning in 1995, E.S. Annual Academy Awards Pre-Awards show as well. Beginning in 1997, Rivers hosted her own radio show on war in New York City. Rivers also appeared as one of the Center Square occupants on the 1986-89 version of The Hollywood Squares, hosted by John Davidson. In 1994, Influenced by the stand-up comedy of Lenny Bruce, Rivers co-wrote and starred in a play about Bruce's mother Sally Ma, who was also a stand-up comic and influenced her son's development as a comic. After 27 previews, Sally Ma and her escorts, a play suggested by the life of Sally Ma, ran on Broadway for 50 performances in May and June 1994. Rivers was nominated for a Drama Desk Award as Outstanding Actress in a Play and a Tony Award for Best Actress in a Play for Playing Sally Ma. 2000s 2010s By 2003, Rivers had left her E! Red Carpet show for a three-year contract to cover award shows Red Carpet events for the TV Guide channel. Rivers appeared in three episodes of the TV show Nep Slash Tuck during its second third and sixth seasons, playing herself. Rivers appeared regularly on television's The Shopping Channel and QVC, promoting her own line of jewelry under the brand name, The Joan Rivers Collection. She was also a guest speaker at the opening of the American Operating Room Nurses 2000 San Francisco Conference. Both Joan and Melissa Rivers were frequent guests on Howard Stern's radio show, and Joan Rivers often appeared as a guest on UK panel show 8 Out of 10 Cats. In 2004, Rivers was part of the formal receiving party, when Ronald Reagan was placed in state at the United States Capitol. Rivers was one of only four Americans invited to the wedding of Charles, Prince of Wales, and Camilla Parker Bowles on April 9, 2005. On August 16, 2007, Rivers began a two-week workshop of her new play, with the working title, The Joan Rivers Theatre Project, at the Magic Theatre in San Francisco. On December 3, 2007, Rivers performed in the Royal Variety Show 2007 at the Liverpool Empire Theatre, England, with Queen Elizabeth II and Prince Philip present. In January 2008, Rivers became one of 20 hijackers to take control of the Big Brother house in the UK. For one day in spin-off TV show Big Brother, Celebrity Hijack, on June 24, 2008, Rivers appeared on NBC TV's show Celebrity Family Feud and competed with her daughter against Ice T and Coco. Rivers and daughter Melissa were contestants in 2009 on the second Celebrity Apprentice. Throughout the season, each celebrity raised money for a charity of his or her choice. Rivers selected God's Love We Deliver. After a falling out with poker player Rani Duke, following Melissa's on air firing by Donald Trump, Rivers left the green room telling Clint Black and Jesse James that she would not be in the next morning. Rivers later returned to the show and on May 3, 2009, she became a finalist in the series. The other finalist was Duke. On the season finale, which aired live on May 10, Rivers was announced the winner and hired to be the 2009 Celebrity Apprentice. Rivers was featured on the show's Ed Rock as herself. She was also a special pink carpet presenter for the 2009 broadcast of the Sydney Gay and Lesbian Mardi Gras Parade. She was also roasted in a Comedy Central special, taped on July 26, 2009.
and aired on August 9, 2009. From August 2009, Rivers began starring in the new reality TV series How Do You Get So Rich? on TV Land, a documentary film about Rivers, Joan Rivers, a piece of work premiered at the San Francisco International Film Festival at the Castro Theater on May 6, 2010. In 2011, Rivers appeared in a commercial for GoDaddy, which debuted during the broadcast of Super Bowl XLV. She made two appearances on its Showtime at the Apollo, once as a comedian and once as a guest host. Joan and her daughter premiered the new show Joan and Melissa, Joan Knows Best, on WeTV. The series follows Joan moving to California to be closer to her family. She moves in with daughter Melissa while searching for a home of her own. WeTV then ordered a new season consisting of 10 episodes, which premiered in January 2012. In 2011, Rivers was featured as herself in season 2 of Louis C.K.'s self-titled show Louis, where she performed on stage. Beginning September 10, 2010, Rivers co-hosted the E! show Fashion Police, along with Juliana Ranchik, Kelly Osborne, and George Kotsiopoulos commenting on the dos and don'ts of celebrity fashion. The show started as a half-hour program, but expanded to one hour on March 9, 2012. On August 7, 2012, Rivers showed up in Burbank, California, to protest that the warehouse club Costco would not sell her New York Times best-selling book, I Hate Everyone. Starting with me, she handcuffed herself to a shopping cart and shouted through a megaphone. The police were called to the scene and she left without incident. No arrests were made. On March 5, 2013, she launched a new online talk show on YouTube, called In Bed with Joan. She made a cameo as a member of the Star Police, in a parody of Pharrell Williams' song, Happy, by YouTube personality Bart Baker. On August 26, 2014, Rivers hosted a taping of Fashion Police with Kelly Osborne, Julianne Ramchik, and George Kotsiopoulos about the 66th Primetime Emmy Awards and the 2014 MTV Movie Awards. The day before her throat surgery, Joan released her most recent podcast of In Bed with Joan, with Leanne Rimes and Eddie Cibrian. She appeared posthumously with other female comedians in the documentary Makers, Women in Comedy, which premiered on PBS in October 2014. Comedic Style During her 55-year career as a comedian, her tough-talking style of satirical humor was both praised and criticized as truthful, yet too personal, too gossipy, and very often abrasive. Nonetheless, with her ability to tell it like it is, she became a pioneer of contemporary stand-up comedy. Commenting about her style, she told biographer Gerald Nackman, Maybe I started it. We're a very gossipy culture. All we want to know now is private lives. However, her style of humor, which often relied on making jokes about her own life and satirizing the lives of celebrities and public figures, was sometimes criticized as insensitive. Her jokes about Elizabeth Taylor and Adele's weight, for instance, were often commented on, although Rivers would never apologize for her humor. Rivers, who was Jewish, was also criticized for making jokes about the Holocaust and later explained, this is the way I remind people about the Holocaust. I do it through humor, adding, my husband lost his entire family in the Holocaust. Her joke about the victims of the Ariel Castro kidnapping similarly came under criticism, but she again refused to apologize, stating, I know what those girls went through. It was a little stupid joke. She received multiple death threats throughout her career. Rivers accepted such criticism as part of her using social satire as a form of humor. I've learned to have absolutely no regrets about any jokes I've ever done. You can tune me out, you can click me off, it's okay. I am not going to bow to political correctness. But you do have to learn, if you want to be a satirist, you can't be part of the party. Rivers states that seeing Lenny Bruce perform at a local club while she was in college influenced her developing style. As an unknown stand-up comedian out of college, she struggled for many years before finding her comic style. She did stints in the Catskills and found that she just liked the older style of comedy at the time, such as Phyllis Dillers, who she felt was a pioneer female comedian. Her breakthrough came at the Second City in Chicago in 1961, where she was dubbed the best girl since Elaine May, who also got her start there. But May became her 
and fellow comedian Traver Silverman's role model, as Rivers saw her as, an assertive woman with a marvelous, fast mind and, at the same time, pretty, and feminine. It was also there that she learned, self-reliance, she said, that I didn't have to talk down in my humor, and could still earn an income by making intelligent people laugh. I was really born as a comedian at Second City. I owe it my career, in early 1965, at the suggestion of comedian Bill Cosby, Johnny Carson gave Rivers, whom he billed as a comedy writer, her debut appearance on his show. Cosby, who knew Rivers from their early stand-up days, described her as, an intelligent girl without being a weirdo. A human being, not a kook. Sitting alongside Johnny after her monologue, she displayed an intimate, conversational style which he appreciated, and she was invited back eight more times that year. Time magazine compared her humor to that of Woody Allen, by expressing, how to be neurotic about practically everything, but noting that, her style and femininity make her something special. Rivers also compared herself to Allen, stating, he was a writer, which I basically was, and talking about things that affected our generation that nobody else talked about. The New York Times critic Charles Elmy likewise compared her to Allen, explaining that her style was personal, an autobiographical stream of consciousness. Rivers' image contrasted starkly with Carson's stage demeanor, which was one of the reasons he made her co-host according to critic Michael Pollan who compared their style of humor, in her personal life. She had fewer of those neurotic or intense character traits, according to Ralph Schoenstein, who dated her and worked with her on her humor books. He said, she has no airs. She doesn't stand on ceremony. The woman has absolutely no pretense. She'll tell you everything immediately. Joan isn't cool, she's completely open. It's all grist. It's her old thing, can we talk? According to biographer Victoria Price, Rivers' humor was notable for taking aim at and overturning what had been considered acceptable female behavior. By her bravura she broke through long-standing taboos in humor, which paved the way for other women, including Roseanne Barr, Ellen DeGeneres, and Rosie O'Donnell. Brought to you by Wikividi Documentaries. Would you like to know more?